two of the sonatas call for obligato harpsichord. What does this mean? Is it different from continuo? Yeah, those two words. So obligato, obliged, it means I am obliged to play the notes that are written down on the page. <laughs> <laughs> better, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it means my part is fully written out. Both hands, all mm -hmm. the notes I have to play are all there. So it's like a solo for the harpsichord with mm -hmm. a b added bonus, uh, in this case, of another part. And it does turn into kind of a trio sonata. So my left hand would be like the continuo, and my right hand would be one of the solo instruments, and then the cellist or the violinist would be the other. Um, and they think, for instance, the trio, the organ trio sonata, speaking of transcription, he wrote mm. these amazing organ trio sonatas, very, very hard to play on the organ, but they're basically trio sonatas, and the bottom part's played by your feet, and then each hand on yeah. the piano, and they are transcribed beautifully as trio sonatas. Um, anyway, that's the obligato. It's fairly unusual in our Baroque world to be playing with other people and playing music that's all written out. Mm -hmm. uh, because most of the time we're playing continuo, so all we have in front of us is the bass line, which in the continuo is not as I'm, I'm playing with you, Kieran. And then if we're lucky, we get a bunch of numbers, and the numbers tell us what harmony to play. It's sort of akin to a guitar chart. You see, it's, it's a slightly different way of notating it, but it's a bunch of numbers. It tells us the chord, and we make that up. So we play the chord however we want, whatever rhythm, whatever number of notes, how we want to play it, where on the keyboard. So it's all, it's improvised and it, it changes. And that was, that was at the root of Baroque ensemble playing for a keyboard player or a lutenist or anybody with chords. So that's what I usually do. So on three pieces on this concert, I'm playing continual. But on the two, the one with violin and the one with cello, I'm reading the notes. <laughs> Which and was is, it hard to to switch that mindset? Is that the one be... that I sometimes find hard? But I'm playing that when you play a harpsichord concerto. Well, I'll do Brandenburg Five as an example because. We've all been practicing our Brandenburgs, and we very much hope to play that for you in uh, next season. Uh, but that one, of course, I have a massive solo part. It's the main solo instrument in the piece. But in the sort of orchestral openings and some of the in-between bits, I'm supposed to play continuo, and I only have the left hand. So I'm playing continuo, and sometimes, not in concert ever, but in sometimes in rehearsal, the solo starts, and I just keep playing continuo because I forget. <laughs> Don't see that line. Read the music. Yeah, yeah read the music. <laughs> so there's that. It is a different mindset, definitely, mm -hmm. to go from playing the ob the obligato, which is quite challenging in terms of technical things. It's, there's a lot of the equivalent of a tongue twister, finger twister, coordination things between the hands that you don't have so much with continuo because sort of by definition you can't improvise something that that's too hard to play <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean if you do you, you grind to a halt so 